Welcome to HP ThinPro PC Converter, HP Device Manager, Mass Deployment Pixie Tutorial. As a disclaimer, this tutorial makes the following assumptions. The Windows server is set up, configured, and introduced into your environment, and that HP Device Manager 5.0 Service Pack 1 or 2 is installed and configured, and that finally ThinPro PC Converter device and maintenance licenses have been purchased and obtained. Notice this tutorial demonstrates a single licensing file for both device and maintenance licenses. You may have more than one licensing file. For example, renewing the maintenance license and or purchasing a replacement license for a retired product is an example of having more than one licensing file. This tutorial covers the following, the hardware requirements as well as the licensing details for HP ThinPro PC Converter, downloading ThinPro 7.1 Service Pack 5 from within HP Update Center in HP Device Manager 5.0 Service Pack 2, adding and or importing devices into HP Device Manager, setting up Pixie support within HP Device Manager, deploying ThinPro 7.1 Service Pack 5 to those imported devices, Pixie booting those imported devices, deploying ThinPro converter licensing to those imported devices, and then finally resuming ThinPro PC setup for those imported devices. HP ThinPro PC converter includes the following minimum hardware requirements. It will run on just about any x86 64-bit compatible hardware, Intel or AMD processors, on as little as two, two gigabytes of memory as well as two gigabytes of storage, on Intel, ATI, AMD, and or NVIDIA graphics, wired or wireless networking, or USB 2.0 or 3.0. Notice we will not be utilizing the USB install method for this tutorial. HP ThinPro PC Converter utilizes two licensing files from within a possible single licensing file. When you purchase both the device license and maintenance license together, you will receive a single mass licensing file that will have a certain device count associated with it. The device license portion of that file will include the download, install, and use of ThinPro PC Converter software. It will be a perpetual uh, license in that it will never change or expire. Once a device is retired and or replaced, that particular portion of the license will expire with it and it will re reach end of life. So whenever you do replace that device, you will need a new device license uh, to go with that device. The maintenance license will entitle you to ThinPro PC converter upgrade security patches and bug fixes, as well as HP Device Manager upgrade security patches and bug fixes. The maintenance piece does in fact need to be renewed after a one or three year term. Just like the device license, if a device should be either retired or replaced, that particular maintenance license will expire with it when that device reaches end of life. And then when you replace that device, you will need to purchase a new maintenance license to go with it. As a reminder, only the maintenance license will need to be renewed after the one or three year expiration. Let's begin. I have already installed Windows Server Standard 2016 in my environment, and I've also installed and pre-configured HP Device Manager 5.0 Service Pack 2. And I've also obtained my ThinPro Converter license and placed it on my desktop. Now what I will go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and launch HP Device Manager Service Pack 2 by double-clicking the shortcut on the desktop. And then I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my demonstrator account. And once logged in, I'm gonna see the splash screen and a brief loading bar. And once we are in HP Device Manager, we're going to start by clicking on Templates and Rules. Once we're in Templates and Rules, I'm gonna go ahead and click on HP Update Center from within the toolbar. And I'm gonna give it a few seconds to go ahead and retrieve all the updates. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna click in the header for OS type. And I'm gonna go ahead and narrow this down to ThinPro 7 and click OK. And then I'm gonna do the same for device model in the header. But this time I'm just gonna go ahead and narrow it down to non-applicable because our ThinPro converter image is device agnostic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now the end result is I'm gonna get two choices. I'm gonna get the ThinPro image and then also the Smart Zero variant of the image. It's exactly the same image, it's just one is set up for Smart Zero so that you don't have to change it later. Go ahead and choose the one that's applicable for your use case for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Thin Pro variant, and I'm gonna go ahead and then click Generate Templates. 
Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to select X 64 bit for architecture. I'm going to go ahead and leave the OS type of the image to HP Thin Pro 7. And then for a device model, since we do have to put in a device model, you could choose any of these device models. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe choose a T530 and just click the little plus to add it. Now, don't worry about this too much because it is going to be agnostic when you go ahead and deploy this. So it doesn't really matter which device you choose. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then Generate. It's going to ask me where I want uh, to place that in which OS family. I'm going to go ahead and choose HP Thin Pro 7 and click OK. It's going to give me a new pop-up saying following templates were successfully generated. It's going to list out the image of choice as well as the category HP Thin Pro 7. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then close out of this window for HP Update Center. Now if I scroll down my long listing of templates, I should in fact see our new template and it is going to be somewhat grayed out and highlighted in blue. And you're going to notice here in gray transferring. Now what that is actually doing is it's actually downloading from the HP Update Center and then in fact transferring that image to our repository. And in fact, if you have more than one repository, it will probably sync based on your settings down to your child repository. So we're going to go ahead and give that a couple of seconds to transfer and then we will proceed forward. Now that it has finished transferring to my repository, you'll notice that it is now solid and not grayed out anymore. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to right click that template and now I'm going to create a template for Pixie Deploy. So since we're gonna to need to Pixie Deploy to these imported uh, devices that we will be importing uh, as the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create Template for Pixie Deploy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the OS family of HP Thin Pro 7 and leave the template name as defaulted and click OK. I'm gonna get a pop up for successfully copied template and it's gonna list out my image name as well as HP Thin Pro 7 underscore 64 and hit OK. And if I scroll down a little bit further, you're gonna notice here that it created a Pixie variant of the image. So now we have both a non-Pixie and a Pixie variant of the image, but we're gonna go ahead and use the Pixie variant for the purposes of this tutorial. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna import our uh, devices that we need to convert. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and select manage devices up at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and think about how many devices uh, that I'm going to need to import. Now, if I only need to import a handful of devices, I can go ahead and click on add a device within the toolbar. Now, if I need to truly mass deploy several devices, I can go ahead and click on the import devices. So let me go ahead and first click on the add a device and explain uh, what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna ask you for the device ID, the MAC address, the IP address, and then of course the OS family and the gateway you wanna uh, associate it with. The device ID and the MAC address are one and the same. So if you populate a device ID, uh, it's gonna be pre-populating your MAC address. So just go ahead and collect all your MAC addresses for the devices you wish to convert and put these in, if there's only a handful of them, one at a time into this tool. And what that could look like, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a handy MAC address here that I have accessible to me. I'm just gonna paste one in. And let's try this one more time. There it is. And you'll notice that it already pre-populates the MAC address field. Now for the IP address, many of you are going to have DHCP environments and you may not necessarily know the IP address that the device is going to get when it picks your boots. Uh, you can actually spoof an IP address, one that you know is potentially safe to put in here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put in 192.168.0.150 and I know that that IP address is available. Now for, for purposes of this tutorial, it could have been any IP address. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, depending on the grouping that we are pre-selected in, and for the purposes of, of this tutorial, we are in the manual group, we are going to find our device in others. So when I click others, you're gonna notice that it is currently an offline device. It's not gonna have a host name. It is gonna have the MAC address, the IP address we spoofed, and it's gonna assume uh, that we're gonna be utilizing HP Device Manager Agent version five. And then of course, there are gonna be some blank fields here as well. So that's how you go about importing a handful of devices one at a time. Now let's say you have more than one device. You can go ahead and click on import devices up here in the toolbar. And you can point it to the path of a file that has a listing of your devices. It could be a, a CSV or a text file. 
And then you have a handy little checkbox here for send task to rename devices if their names are changed. Now, if we want to look at the sample, we'll go ahead and click on this link for sample files. And you're going to notice it's going to have a sample for a CSV and a sample for a text. If I double click on the text, you'll notice that it has a legend up here at the top for how we should align our information and then some samples here at the bottom. So just like the individual uh, device importer for the mass importer, we can go ahead and list out our devices in this format and we don't necessarily have to have an exact IP address. We can spoof the end here and then we can go ahead and proceed forward. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go forward with the single device that we imported. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this sample file and out of this window and then out of the import devices mass importer here. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm before I go ahead and, and uh, deploy our image to our device, we need to make sure that HP Device Manager is set up for Pixie. Now, the way in which we're gonna do that is we're going to click on uh, the gateways and repositories and then the gateway on the submenu off to the left, make sure that we're on that. And depending on the gateways that we have, we only have one in this tutorial, but you may have more. We're gonna first left click it, highlight it blue, then right click it, and we're gonna configure our gateway. And the setting we're gonna look for is right here. Start HP Device Manager Pixie Service when HPDM gateway is started. And we're gonna switch that to yes. And then we're gonna go ahead and click okay. Now we're gonna notice up here at the top, tasks and reports is gonna light up with an orange number one. We can click on that and then navigate to our gateway tasks. And we'll notice here that it already configured our gateway for Pixie support. Now we're ready to go ahead and deploy our image. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back to manage devices. And I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down our long listing of templates here to the left and I'm gonna find my Pixie image. Now note it's the one here at the very bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and click, drag and drop that to my device. And then once I do that, it's gonna give me the task editor. I can adjust many settings in the task editor. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go with the default and I'm just simply gonna click OK. I'm gonna get a brief pop-up saying the subnet of the device in red color is not the same with its HPM gateway. Would you like to send the task anyway? Please ignore this pop-up as it, as it is not applicable for this type of scenario. So go ahead and click yes. And now we're gonna notice a, a, another orange number one lighting up on tasks and reports. If I click on that and then click on device tasks, you will notice that it went ahead and deployed out that image to that one device. And it is now currently in sending status. And we know that via the legend down here at the bottom that shows orange for sending. Now it's gonna stay there in sending. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna locate our device that we wish to be converted. We're going to connect that to our network. And then we're gonna go ahead and enter into the BIOS, make sure that we are properly set up with the correct boot order necessary for Pixie booting to a LAN device. And then we're gonna utilize whatever key short, shortcut uh, you would need for that device to go ahead and Pixie boot it. Now, unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate this for you as there are many different versions of BIOS and many different ways that manufacturers choose to initiate Pixie boot. Just note that you need to configure your BIOS appropriate for Pixie booting for the LAN device and then strike the key that is necessary to Pixie boot the device. Once you've successfully done so, you're gonna see the typical Pixie scenario and you will actually see the HPDM server answer and it will begin to download the image. Now, once that is complete, this bar here in orange will change green and it will symbolize finished via the legend down here as it indicates. Now, once we're finished with that, the converted device will be sitting at a configuration screen, very similar to, to how you would see an open box scenario for a Windows device. It's gonna have you choose the language and, and time and things of that nature. That's where it's gonna be sitting. Now what we're gonna to want to go ahead and do is deploy a license for that converted device. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and navigate to our Manage Devices tab. And we are gonna go ahead and look for a specific template for deploying the license. And there it is. And we're gonna go ahead and click, drag and drop that on our thin client device. And it's going to ask for the licensing file or files. We're gonna go ahead and click the add. And we're gonna go ahead and browse to that licensing file that we placed on our desktop. And there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and click open. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to notice another orange number one lighting up in tasks and reports. And if we click on that and locate underneath the, the device tasks submenu, we're going to notice that there is a pending task for deployment of that licensing file. Now, once everything is complete, what you should see here is two green bars indicating finished via the legend down here at the bottom. And then you'll know that your image is both successfully deployed as well as the license successfully deployed and you should not encounter any licensing errors on that device. And now what you will need to do is proceed forward with the configuration of that converter device and set up as necessary. In summary, we demonstrated the following, how to properly deploy ThinPro PC Converter via HP Device Manager and Pixie, as well as how to deploy ThinPro PC Converter licensing. I would like to invite you to join the following webinars at the two following links. This concludes our tutorial. Thank you.